So, uh, actually, Barry asked me uh, in a Twitter conversation a little while back if I would do a talk on a lightning talk on Doctor Who. Uh, it's a pretty big subject, so I decided to do just one thing that I think even people who are fans of Doctor Who may not know or may have forgotten. Uh, so, uh, most people will know that the current series of Doctor Who started with the ninth incarnation, which was played by Christopher Eccleston. Uh, followed by David Tennant, who's the 10th, and now Matt Smith, who's the 11th. This is the new series that was created. Uh, the, the Doctor Who uh, kind of mythos is based around this idea of regeneration. Doctor has, a, has more than one life, and as he reaches the end of one body, he can regenerate up to 12 times. Uh, the first seven Doctors appeared in a BBC series, TV series that ran from 63 to 89, and they're pictured here. The uh, first one was William Hartnell, Patrick Troughton was the second, John Pertwee, uh, the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker, who's the Doctor I think of as my Doctor. Uh, fifth Doctor was played by Peter Davidson, and he was actually a brilliant Doctor as well. Sixth Doctor, Colin Baker. Seventh Doctor, uh, Sylvester McCoy. And then he handed off, and a lot of people don't know this, to the Eighth Doctor. And this is, some, uh, some people call him the Unknown Doctor. He was only ever in one... Uh, one appearance, he, he had one movie, it was a made-for-TV movie, a pilot that Fox and the BBC did in 1996. Uh, and it wasn't very good. It, it, it missed on a number of levels. The, part of the problem was uh, it didn't appeal to American audiences because Doctor Who is just kind of weird. And so <laughs> trying to bring it across to an American audience at that point did not make sense. And it didn't work with British audiences because they tried to Americanize it to appeal to the American audience. The Doctor doesn't use guns. The Doctor is not an action hero. He's an intellectual. And yet they had him riding motorcycles and shooting guns and things. So it didn't really work out. Anyway, let's have a quick look at this. Some of the things that uh, you can find a whole bunch of stuff out about the, the Doctors through the ages. Um, but I think some of the things that were unfortunate is because he got overlooked as part of this failed experiment, uh, Paul McGann was the actor who played the Doctor, uh, was actually a really good choice as a Doctor. He made a very compelling character. And actually, I think the TARDIS that he had, the TARDIS reflects the personality of the Doctor in the Doctor's reincarnation. And uh, the TARDIS that he had is prob probably the best of the TARDISes that there have been. It was very Victorian, uh, very Gothic looking, uh, great, great image. It's hard to actually find the images now, but... Uh, uh, this is what it looked like. It was, it was kind of like a steam, almost a steampunk kind of feel. Uh, wonderfully uh, dark and atmospheric kind of thing. Now, just because the Doctor, the Eighth Doctor, actually only got one outing, uh, doesn't mean that there isn't a lot more information available. And this is where it kind of comes in. The, the uh, pilot was largely a failure, but actually this Doctor is one of the most traveled and adventured Doctors of all of them. Uh, because the series was taken off immediately, the writers who wrote the original scripts for most of the Doctor Who series started writing once a month uh, literary, you know, book, book form adventures, which are all available, you have to search for them, and, and actually a lot of the time you have to torrent them now, they're very hard to find. Uh, so there was all these books written once a month from the, basically from uh, 96 through to uh, January 2005, they got a little bit less regular at the end. But there's some really, really fun uh, adventures in there. Also, this company called Big Finish bought the rights to all of the early Doctors, and they've released the 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th Doctor adventures in audio play form. And these are really good. They're a couple of hours each, and they're like a radio play. Really uh, uh, kind of compelling uh, science fiction, lots of good stuff. If you, want a, if you want a recommendation of one to try out, Zagreus is actually a great one to listen to, first of all. One minute. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess, finishing up, there's just a couple of things I want to mention about the uh, Eighth Doctor, the Unknown Doctor. There is a huge gap between the Eighth Doctor, even with the stories that have been told so far, and where Christopher Eccleston comes into it. And hopefully these are going to be explored at some point. So, there's mention in the new series of the Great Time Lord. Uh, in the Eighth Doctor, the Time Lords are still around and they're a pain in his side. They have all disappeared by the time Christopher Eccleston comes in. We never see the regeneration of Paul McGann to Christopher Eccleston. We don't even know that Christopher Eccleston is actually the Ninth Doctor. He could be another one. We don't know that whole, that whole uh, timeline between the two. So, uh, anyway, I think my time's about up, but the point is, there's a lot of information out there that you, if you're a real Doctor Who fan and you want more stuff, 
That's it. Uh, mm -hmm.